I'm going to do. I'm just going to back up here and I'm going to show you uh, the all terrain progress control thing uh, in low box and then we know where we're going. So what I've done here is I've pulled over. I'm going to go down this bit of a track here because I know where it goes. Um, I'm going to engage all terrain progress control uh, and I'm going to do that by holding down my brake. You can see automatic. Why is it not? focusing in all terrain progress control is selected you can see the little symbol chap that we've got down here is correct uh, but i'm going to engage um i'm going to engage um, uh, low box by engaging neutral and then pressing the low transmission moxie you can see all the technologies happening up here um, and now you can see my symbols change low ratio well, there's light on here some technology things happened up here you can see low ratio and then I'm going to put it into drive there we go drive and then I'm going to select the automatic progress control thing and I'm going to select a speed of um, I don't know shall we say five is that five five kilometers now maybe a little bit faster maybe yeah seven kilometers now and off it goes he's doing his thing i've taken my foot off the brake it has revved up into the low ratio and we are proceeding at set speed and i am not applying any throttle but it is so uh, normally that big snow drift there and, and you can't see but there's a big snow drift uh, and it would have slowed me down a prop stalled me you know and i would have needed a bit of gas but uh, this machine has done it all for me uh, because it has it anticipates it seemed that there's been a call upon engine for more power and um channeling into clarkson and you can see it's a bit bouncy here uh, but the automatic progress control thing has maintained an even keel and a constant battle, even though I've bounced all around the cab there a bit with the ruts. Um, and now we're going to have slowed it down a bit to six because that was a bit was a bit rapid for my liking. Uh, so I've set it at six now, I'm set it at seven. Uh, and as we go through this snow drift here, um, it will maintain a constant speed uh, because that's what it's meant to do, basically. And uh, you'll see as we get into the deep snow here, it's probably about a foot and a half deep, I say. Uh, I've still not got my foot on the gas and it's eight kilometers an hour because that's what I set it down. There we go, eight kilometers an hour. And we've got, it's gone a bit sticky here. Look, all manner of stuff's happening. Ooh, sticky, sticky, sticky. So, we have a lot of things happening. You can see here, uh, I'm spinning. You can see here, the little yellow lines that happen when the wheels are spinning. And I'm just going to rotate the steering wheel to see if that gives me a bit of help. Um, and it's giving me no help at all here. Oh, we're into a big drift here. So, I'm going to apply the brake. Um, because we seem to have been sliding into this big ear snow drift. I'm going to engage reverse gear to back out under control. Uh, hopefully, anyway. So, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but what's happened is I've sort of got into a bit of a ditch out there, and uh, so I've engaged uh, low ratio, and I've engaged mud and ruts, and I've raised my suspension up here, and uh, I'm just going to go outside, because what I'm going to try and show you is the bit of a mess. It's very windy out there, so you'll just have to... Uh, go for long as I yell at the phone. So what's happening uh, is I've, as I've come out of here, I've, I've cut the corner a bit too sharp and I've gone into a big ditch. And um, as I've gone into this ditch, and then of course forward momentum wasn't sufficient, so it stalled me and then of course it dug a big hole, as you saw. So what I did was I engaged reverse and carried on and just backed out, but I lifted her, ooh, I lifted her up, look, her up, and um, it's very icy down here because we had ice and snow. We had a uh, very wet snow that froze and then it snowed on top of it. So it's, but it is quite deep. You can see the Land Rover was going through this snow here, which is, well, here's me and here's my knee. Can I show you how deep that is? There's my knee and there's the top of the bank. So we're hip height, I would say, which is probably well over the top of the, wheel arch protection kit Whoa. but anyway um, as I say I engaged Whoa. I engaged <laughs> must be minus 5 or 7 out there it's windy anyway so I engaged all these controls 
uh, the race suspension and the low ratio and the mud and rut and snow. Uh, I didn't use grass, gravel and snow because if you're in deep snow, you don't want grass, gravel and snow. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but what you want is something that gives you a lot of power. So mud and ruts or sand would have worked in there, but I engaged mud and ruts because I wanted the axle articulation as well that the mud and ruts gives you. And then I basically gave it the beans and out it came. So we're just going to go back. Uh, and this affords me an excellent opportunity to explain to you why it is that I'm not actually a fan of automatic tra uh, automatic progress traction control or whatever, ATPC or whatever it is that it is. And, and the reason for that is because uh, I knew that as I was going into here, I was going to need a bit more gas. But, in order to prove a point that the vehicle would accelerate a little bit to maintain that speed, or sort of let it get going, and this is where one of the times when the driver's anticipation of the situation is more accurate or important than the, the vehicle's ability to sense and anticipate the track ground in front of him. So I knew that I needed more beams because I knew that it was sort of cutting the corner and I could feel that it was getting bogged down and didn't have enough momentum. So I could have, at that point, provided a bit more throttle, and I still could, really, with the automatic uh, terrain, automatic progress terrain response, or whatever it's called. Um, I can't just think of the words of it now. Uh, but for purposes of what we were doing, I just wanted to show you how it went on, and, and of course, that got me into a bit of a, a drama, didn't it? But, um, so the story is this. Um, if I were driving this manually, uh, I would have been able to accelerate and give the car a bit more beans, and I could have also done that with this ATPC on. I could have just accelerated a bit and, and gone out, but I didn't, so uh, just to show you that we can go up there, I mean, well, well, you can hear it's revving, go up there, go on, go on, there you go. So the correct method of approaching that problem is to give it more beans. Uh, basically, uh, and that's that. That's that's what it was. I shall, I shall drive around that and show you again because I can. Um, I'm in low ratio, which you shouldn't really be for snow. And I'm going to actually. What I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll come out of that, and then uh, you. It's a funny sort of situation with snow because uh, you want the control, but you also want uh, you also want a bit more momentum and a bit more opportunity to give it the beans if you if you need it, if you feel it's sucking in. So with snow, which is quite power sapping in the same way that sort of sand is, um, you want a bit of momentum and you want a bit of, I don't know if you can just see how deep that was, but it's uh, probably knee high there in that little bit of a gully. There's always a bit of a ditch at the side of these things. Now I'm driving on my own here, using my sort of uh, throttle and we're going to uh, throttle control and we're just going to go around this bit of a bumpy bit that I showed you but one of the things that I do like about the Land Rover is that um, this, def this defender he says you're not going to get stuck here again are you Fergie? this defender has um, has got uh, uh, because I'm in mud and ruts it's automatically desensitised the throttle pedal which means that it's less susceptible to bouncy bouncy and even though we'll just go around there and show you what we did We've not yet frozen up here in the Berta. I mean, I know it's minus seven or whatever it is. Um, but can you see uh, the ground isn't frozen? So what I've done is I've gone into that bit there that was very soft and boggy uh, and ploughed up about a foot and a half of uh, a rut. <laughs> Eek. Um, and that's why I needed a bit more power. Now, the tyres that I've got on, uh, that I should have probably shown you, or maybe you could have seen when I came out of there. They are uh, a, uh, a Nokian Hakapolita 9, which I've just fitted. Uh, a bit too wide for my preferences, but they are what they are. And uh, one of the downsides to Nokian tyres, which I have often exclaimed, is that winter tyres, by their very nature, are not terribly good um, at deep snow. They're sort of designed for ice and snow uh, and that's not the same thing deep snow actually needs an off-road tire like an AT tire or something like that um, and that's one of the reasons that the Cooper AT3s are better so here we go I'm just we're in high range now and I'm just going to go back and do that bit and show you that we can with high range and just a little bit of momentum you see how much easier it is doing it that way than in the low range where you've got too much wheel spin and so on and so forth um, so this is one of those times, that particular section is one of those times where it's necessary um, to have 
uh, a little bit of driver input because my experience with driving is better in this particular situation than um, I'm just going to disengage my modern rut setting and go back into standard comfort program has been engaged uh, it's one of those times when um, when my experience is, is better in the situation than the vehicle sort of technology in the sense that it's limited to a certain extent or to a certain sort of um, it's, it's, it's limited by its inability to anticipate you see uh, uh, but it also afforded me the opportunity to show you one of the downsides of the automatic uh, terrain response program automatic progress control or whatever they call it and uh, and it's also why should I know I should tell you what that is I'm going to stop stop the car stop the car and I'm going to tell you what it's called because I keep messing the name up don't I and I should know what I'm talking about ATPC all terrain progress control it's called all terrain progress control that's what it's called uh, and so one of the downsides of that of course is that it's limited by whatever the vehicle can sense and I also don't like one of the things that I don't like about it is that while it's pulling you along if I like to be able to, to stop it if you see what I mean I, when I'm looking I want to be able to to see when I need to stop something uh, instead of it carrying on because it can't tell if there's something in the way or a bit of dodgy ground or something there's no idea has it so um, there seems to be a bit of a drama here somebody's being towed out look. Um, and so uh, that's another reason I'm not a, a particularly big fan of it. Oh, it's a student driver. That's a bad day. The student driver is stuck in a schnee drift. Uh, oh, they've got a rope, so they seem to be knowing what they're up to. Um, I'm just going to drive through this snow drift that this person is stuck in, and we are going to be there. Um, are you all sorted? Yes, you're all sorted. There's a jeep. Uh, so there you go. Anyway, I, I hope that's interesting to you, or at least marginally useful. Uh, and I'm sort of glad that we found a big snow river and got it in. And I'm, I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> this happened the other time. I've got a great video. Actually, it's a, a really poor video. But I, on the way back from Alaska, Alaska wasn't Alaska, the Arctic Zone. On the way back from the Arctic Zone, I hit a major snowstorm. I'm sure you've seen the video. And uh, I'm careering down this this thing from Nugget City, and the snow is terrible. And there's, there's a big truck, a uh, semi truck, that's parked up, it's stuck on this hill. And uh, I ended up pulling a, a, a van and a, and a three axle truck out, and then the three axle truck towed the big truck out. Um, but I ended up towing the, this, these two things up this hill. Uh, and it was very dark at night, and, and it was a bit funny weather-wise and I'd set the video to record me pulling this thing out and as I shoved the camera back in the window on his little magnet I must have just caught the, the record button and it stopped recording so I, I'm only, I did it there when I tried to show you how I was going to get out of that hole uh, I switched it must have put that camera in the window and twitched it off so you've missed the best bits but any anyway, we've got we've got some stuff haven't you and a bit of uh, whatever so uh, welcome to a canadian sort of winter i've got a roof half undone in this weather and had to tarp it up to avoid the snowstorm uh it's given this for another couple of days so there you go anyway uh thanks for what i was going to say all this wasn't it but right back at the beginning thank you very much for tuning in uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope some of the information has been useful. Uh, I will record more videos. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and that way you can get fresh content from yours truly. And listen to more inane, bambling, blithering. <laughs> Somebody on my post, he says he's off again. Look. Somebody says, uh, you're a bit like Ronnie Corby when he used to do the... Uh, conversations in the big chair. I am I'm a bit like Ronnie Corby. I'm a bit like Ronnie Corby and the big yin. That's who I'm like. I'm a cross between the two. Uh, and a cross between the two heights as well, I think. Probably. Sort of in the middle. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. See you next week. Cheerio!